This is going to be my review of, oh, that's really dirty. All right, this is my review of the 7 to 14 f 2.8 for astrophotography and some other things. This lens is really a very amazing lens, and I don't think it actually gets anywhere near the credit that it kind of deserves for just how good it is and, and how well designed it is. So, it's actually a big lens. It's probably one of the bigger lenses that I've ever purchased from Olympus as far as, you know, what I was expecting, okay? Uh, just about every single lens that I bought for the MFT system, when I got the box, I was like, is there anything in here, you know? With this guy, it was a different story. It was hefty feeling. And when you get the lens out, it is a big lens, but it does so much and it does it all so well, <laughs> okay? First off, it's a constant F2.8 aperture. It's also an entirely internal zoom, sort of, okay? But that's actually one of the cool things about this lens. So let's get in here kind of close to this thing. You'll notice that th this is at 14 millimeters. At the longest focal length, the lens is actually detracted into the lens hood, the built-in lens hood. However, when you go to the widest angle, which is what we are right now, we're at F7, we're at seven millimeters, the lens actually moves forward. And that means that this built-in lens shade, essentially, it does like almost double duty. Not only is it protecting the lens, but when the lens needs to be projected the most, when the lens hood needs to be the shortest, the lens is moved all the way forward. And so this has the least amount of, you know, vignetting effect on, on the lens. But when it needs to be at a longer focal length, it's pulled back and therefore it almost, in essence, extends the lens shade, which is incredibly cool. I mean, come on, like how many times have I seen that design element put into a lens? You don't see it very often. Now, one of the criticisms that's been lauded against this lens is that you can't put screw-on filters on the front, or at least not filters that are very compact, okay? You can get filters for these things, but they're, they're quite large, obviously because of the built-in lens hood. However, as an astrophotographer, we really don't use filters that goes on the, on the front of our optics that often because that's just, number one, it's really inefficient, and number two, it gets really expensive fast. What we tend to prefer are actually the clip-in type filters that go inside of the camera. And one of the cool things about this lens is that because it projects the light straight onto the sensor, rather than at, at an extreme angle, is that you can use this guy with uh, quite a few clip-in filters without having like weird color cringing issues showing up. So kind of a big plus for astrophotography. Now, as you zoom with the lens, the rear lens element does stay in place. It doesn't move around at all, which of course means that you don't have to worry about this thing punching backwards and maybe hitting your clip-in filter. Now, of course, we got to talk about the clutch a little bit. So I love and hate the clutch, which is this right here. It's where the focusing ring clips back, backwards and forwards to essentially change yourself from manual focus to autofocus. I don't like this particular feature. I mean, okay, yeah, I actually do like it, okay? It's so freaking cool. When you show it to your friends, everybody just goes, oh, cool. You know, <laughs> it is a wow type feature. It's like in the 1970s when you rolled up and your windows went down via a button rather than cranking a knob. Of course, you know. Now, was it better? No, the old fashioned cranks I think were still a lot better because you could crack a window a lot easier and you could actually get them down a lot faster too if you cranked them down by hand. But at the same time, it just had that wow effect. And now today you can't get a car without electric windows, you know, at least not without special ordering them. So yeah, I have a love-hate relationship with the clutch. And for the most part, I turn the clutch off in the camera so that even if I do accidentally click it on, it isn't active at all. And that's because I've just had too many times when the picture was out of focus because I had accidentally bumped that focusing ring. And since I use Starry Sky Autofocus with just about all of my astro photos, I, yeah, the, the clutch doesn't really 
involve me or neither is it a factor. Now, interestingly enough, starry sky autofocus is something you're really going to want as a feature in your camera if you're going to use this lens for astrophotography. And that is because putting a batten off mask on this lens, it is possible, you know, you could you can basically make one and print one if you wanted to in the 3D printer. However, it's not very practical just because of the built-in lens hood and the kind of the odd way that it's shaped. So, I, for me, I think that Starry Sky Autofocus, which is a feature that's kind of starting to be a standard feature now on Olympus cameras, is a must. And then the optics in this thing, they're really quite awesome. For a wide-angle zoom, Olympus did a fantastic job designing this lens. And from 7 to 14 millimeters, you can use this lens completely wide open. I know the first time I went out shooting with it, I used it at f4 because I just assumed that I would have to stop it down. And then afterwards, when I looked back at my test shots, I was like, wait a minute, I should have been using f2.8 the whole night because it's a solid performer. And I know a lot of people kind of get a little taken back when I say, you know, majority of camera lenses are terrible wide open. And in astrophotography, astrophotography is the ultimate test of a lens. And really it is. This is this is an amazing lens when it comes to sharpness. Now there is some vignetting at the wider angle focal lengths, seven millimeters especially, but you'll probably be taking flats. Now flats with a lens like this are a little bit tricky. You're definitely gonna have to use the t-shirt technique and yeah, it is what it is. But, you know, hey, you take good flats and you'll basically be able to compensate for that vignetting. Now, if you're taking just single images, well, then you can use the built-in vignette controls that are in the camera itself. And they do actually do a pretty good job of taking care of that vignette. I'm gonna compliment one more aspect of the lens, at least as far as design goes, and that's the lens cap. I really like the lens cap. Now, I know it's not the type that clips into the filter threads because there are no filter threads in this lens. However, putting this thing on is just very easy and taking it off is very easy. And when I'm trying to do something quickly, especially if I'm doing terrestrial type of photography, maybe I'm photographing an event or I'm at work taking images, just being able to take this on and off very quickly is kind of an added plus. And, you know, the lens hood's already built into it. All my other lenses, you know, I gotta take the lens hood off, flip it around, put it back on, and it's just kind of a pain, <laughs> okay? I can see how Robin Wong doesn't shoot with any lens hoods at all because they get in the way. You know, now I, I like the lens hoods because it does protect the optic and, you know, it keeps it from getting banged and it's, it's like a shield and a protector, but, yeah, as for like the lens hood, it's, as for the lens cap, I really like the lens cap. And if you look at mine, you can see that it is kind of beat up because you know, this, this lens has seen a lot of use for me. Now, the lens's zoom range, it's seven to 14. That, it kind of somewhat seems like a lot, but it's actually not. When you, you know, you're looking through the camera and you're zooming with it, it's a very short zoom ratio. It's only two X really. And although it's short, you gotta remember this is a super wide angle lens and making a lens like this optically is very, very difficult. If you want a greater, more versatile zoom range, I might recommend the 8 to 25. I don't have the lens, but that one certainly has a much wider zoom range and is quite a bit more usable. Now this guy, it is a little bit wider and that's one of the reasons why I have him is because I need the widest angle field of view that I can get for certain types of work that I do at my day job. If you, if you are a person who has a very complete lens lineup, this is the guy to get. But if you're looking for a minimal number of lenses, well the eight to 25 might be a more reasonable pick, especially for those of you that are doing travel type photography and you need to reduce the number of lenses that are in your bag. Now, if you are doing hardcore travel photography and you know landscapes are something that you will be doing a lot of, eh, maybe the seven to 14 is gonna be your ticket of choice. That along with the eight millimeter fisheye. For those of you who are getting this lens for astrophotography, this is strictly a landscape astrophotography type of lens. Capturing deep sky objects and trying to bring out the hydrogen alpha and that and stuff is kind of difficult just because, well, you're gonna be dealing with the brightest parts of the Milky Way, no doubt, in your image. 
And also there's those dreaded gradients. I mean, I will tell you right now that I am not the best astrophotographer when it comes to real wide angle type astrophotography. And that's because I just, I don't have the patience to deal with all the gradients that you have to deal with with a lens that's this wide. The gradients are not the fault of the lens. It's really the fault of, well, people who leave their lights on at night. So turn off your lights at night, folks.